think, very stimulating but exhausting event. Uh, I, I just like to thank Patrick for such a bravado performance. Um, Patrick, of course, is a philosopher by, by training, and uh, what I thought was really interesting is the level of, of debate we've had so far in terms of um, response from a city which is known for its, known popularly for its lack of, of, uh, of, of intellectual content. I think we've, we've challenged that um, considerably um, by the, the debate that's been going on today. Um, our next speaker, I'm not going to say very much about Francois. I introduced him last time when he gave a lecture, which was uh, an amazing performance also. Um, I made the mistake of describing him as being French. Um, well, he is French, but Francois is a, <coughs> he's a, he's a maverick. He's an outsider. Uh, it was fantastically useful that in his, he peppered his conversation with terms that came straight out of Foucault, um, heterotopias, panopticons, and things, that allowed me the next day in my lecture to say, well, this stuff I've been teaching you about is not irrelevant. It does feed into design. Um, and one thing I did also mention in introducing him uh, was that he has this astonishing capacity to, in this almost in the same sentence, to refer to uh, Slavoj Žižek and the great sort of intellectual figures in the world today and scripting um, and the world of technology, which I think is highly unusual. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, he's here in LA is, in the USC, is we, we love him. Um, it's fantastic, the work he does, and the work also in the studio. Um, but also, he loves LA, he loves surfing, and it's, <laughs> it's, a, it's also a great privilege to have in the audience this afternoon, Barack Kochnevis, uh, who is the inventor of contour crafting, and with whom uh, Francois has collaborated in the past. Um, so Francois is, is not French. Um, I realized that uh, he said, well, are you English? And uh, <coughs> I like, then I am English actually, but I, I prefer not to say that. <coughs> and my car is, um, my little mini is actually English, but it's not English because it's German. Um, so Francois, when he introduced himself in, uh, in, in Beijing, at the Beijing Biennial, uh, he had a team he had brought together, of, he had curated, uh, the kind of wild card team, and his team came from Antarctica, um, a kind of s some kind of like country beyond any other country, beyond nationalism. Um, and he then gave us an impersonation of a penguin to uh, to <laughs> convince us he was from Antarctica, um, <clears throat> and then uh, I think just stunned us with amazing display of of, of ravishing uh, projects and um, perverse, um, uh, really heterotopic discourse. Um, I'm going to say nothing more about, about Francois. It's a great privilege to have him here at USC this semester. We hope that we'll, we'll have him here again as often as possible. Um, Francois Roche. Thank you, Neil. It's, uh, you, you, it's not so easy. Uh, you flatter me a lot. Uh, specifically, you flatter me when you say I'm not French. It's flatter me a lot. <laughs> you cannot imagine. You cannot imagine. I, I love to be a kind of a native immigrant on my own country. Which is, uh, well, uh, specifically when we talk, when you talk, uh, Patrick, when you talk about Louis XIV. Louis XIV, it was interesting. Uh, he, he asked to Charles Perrault, the writers, the novelist writers, to make a labyrinth. And Charles Perrault did a labyrinth. He was a, he was a writer, not exactly a designer, and uh, uh, not exactly an architect. So he did, a, I think, the only labyrinth which is not symmetrical, which is not only driven by a pure geometry, where really people lose themselves, where people inside the labyrinth could by this way hide themselves. And Louis XVI destroyed the labyrinth because he became a refugee of love and sex. Because, because you could uh, hide yourself, of course, because uh, you, 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 in the labyrinth, you produce a kind of a, of a casba effect of a non-cartographical map where you are directly, immediately at distances from control, at distances from survey. So it's totally different than the uh, utopia of the labyrinth, which is totally platonic in a way to, to, to define a geometry, to define a pure geometry without the psycho effect. And Charles Perrault, because he's a writer, developed a, 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 a psychotic labyrinth. Uh, where really you could lose yourself and you could be lose and you could use the game to be lost, 
to do something else, and specifically sex and love, uh, in in the French in the, that is in the French embassy, uh, royalty exactly. So well, uh, uh, I'm lost a little bit because after the the lectures of Patrick was so expertizing uh, parametricism. It's difficult for me. To, <laughs> it's difficult. I struggle me. So me, I'm more trying to stutter, stuttering architectures to develop a, a, a kind of a, of a Tourette uh, syndrome. <laughs> so well, and we try to apply the Tourette syndrome in a way to produce an architecture. So well, <laughs> I will try to to be as coherent as possible, but. Uh, with my multiple disorder is not so clear. So if, you, if I'm not so clear, you could just justify just because of my English, but honestly, my French is the same. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's not coming from the translation. So we could start by something. It's, well, I think the subject is about machine, robot. A robot is slave worker. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's coming from Polish world. Slave worker, so we are all of us, we are slave worker in this uh, post-capitalism. A pleasure to consume iPod and and uh, and uh, futures design. Uh, it, it was interesting how Patrick, you were I discover a kind of mysticism of the futures, and it's beautiful. It's kind of nostalgia. Uh, it's a kind of nostalgia of the futures, and uh, like uh, we lost the futures. The futures is there is now the, the arrow of time is there directly on the past, and the futures is a sensation of past. It's a sensation of a vintage, like the modernism is a vintage sensation, it's a vintage uh, notion. So it's very interesting for now how we are, because of technology, constructing the futures, which is the past, which is very, uh, 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 perhaps a Tourette syndrome, again, <laughs> in a way to, to, to uh, in the anthropic or in the thermodynamic notion, the arrow of time is not so clear. Specifically, uh, Bruce Sterling talked about that a lot, about tomorrow now, and the, the confusion of the arrow, uh, the confusion of now. So it's, but it, I don't know if it's a drama, or if it's a, a, a potential to use a fantastic potential of technology of today, or of computation, to finally realize what people were thinking in the futures coming from the past, which is finally very, uh, uh, very schizoid. Uh, and I love the schizoid. I love really this kind of, uh, of schizophrenia to, 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 uh, uh, to, to, to fit, to try to fit something which is unfitable. Well, we talk about robots. And if I'm interested about machine, it's uh, specifically on the notion of bachelor machine. Uh, bachelor machine, or bachelor machine, I never know exactly if you can understand, bachelor, okay, thank you. Bachelor machine is a, is a machine which are without coitus interruptus, or with coitus interruptus, of course. It's a, a, it's a machine which is more important in a way to tell a story, in a strategy to tell a story, in a narrative strategy. So the machine is, could be efficient to do something, and the bachelor machine is coming from the, uh, the, the, the novel of, uh, of Frank Kafka, uh, specifically the colony, the penitent colony, where Kafka invents a suffering, torturing machine, writing your guiltiness on your body, and at the same time stuttering the guiltiness, the writing of the, of the, of the guiltiness to never understood, uh, to never understood by, by the visitors, the people around the tortures uh, scene. And, uh, by this way, the only guy, the only people who understand why they are tortures is people who die with a machine. And, uh, uh, and of course, the, 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 the people love to understand why they could die by the machine uh, in this non-understanding protocol. So bachelor machine is something which is, which is uh, talking about a, ve it's, it's a, vectors, it's a vectors of literature. It's a vector of uh, fictional, it's a vector of narration. So uh, I would like to show you several, um, several paradigms, uh, talking about that, of course, uh, the Vaucanson duck, you know, the Vaucanson duck, the first duck of the 18th century, which are able to eat and to shit. So it was the first machine simulating life, simulating death and life, and simulating the circle of the life. And uh, during five years, uh, everybody was thinking that a mechanical duck was realistically through, was a real, real technological duck, which is eating and shitting. And finally, la supercherie, the trap or the trick, was discovered five years after, and uh, the scientific, in, uh, uh, the Vaucanson has been totally eliminated and disqualified because of that, because of course, we cannot reproduce the, 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 the technology like this, but it's, for me, very interesting how it articulates knowledge, how it articulates uh, tale, fairy tale, how it articulates 
how the technology is able to talk about something. It's able to talk about simulation, illusion, of course, artifice, uh, uh, and uh, narrative aspect. Uh, the other, the other uh, references is this uh, 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 incredible uh, glass of uh, Marcel Duchamp. It's visible in the US and it's visible in the uh, Pennsylvania uh, Modern Art Museum, the broken glass which is a kind of metaphor. A metaphor is a very beautiful word. Uh, I have to explain that. It has been disqualified also in architecture because we confuse mimesis, mimicry, metaphor, and everything in architecture, especially the architect. And the metaphor is an Aristotelian uh, notion which is, means a uh, vehicle of transportation. It helps you to, to be transported by a metaphor to another parallel universe and to understand the, the bridge, to construct a bridge between here and there, between uh, ici and maintenant and somewhere uh, uh, in another planet. So it's more a literature uh, 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 style, but in architecture, the metaphor, it's interesting for us to discover or to develop a degree of paranoia. And to develop, for example, in this uh, big glass of Duchamp, how Marcel Duchamp uh, uh, tried to articulate the machinism uh, specifically the machinism of the bachelor waiting the ovaria ovaria of the ovaria of the female to make uh, to make fecundation and to make to, to make love and uh, so there's a waiting and during their waiting they fabricate this kind of chocolate with a chocolate uh, uh, chocolate uh, instrument or chocolate uh, device to produce and to 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 use their time in the waiting time to 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 meet the wedding party, and uh, it's like something which not so far, you talk about but Walter Benjamin, not so far away from the uniqueness of something, not so far away to, to understand the machine, not as a reproduction, not in the, is, a, is a theory of reproduction, in mass production, in production of the mass of Walter Benjamin, but more in the way to, to produce the unique story of what it could be, and to produce a line of subjectivities. So to develop and to articulate a line of subjectivation. So we is not exactly the machine is pretending to do something. It's pretending to articulate knowledge, but perhaps it's doing something else and totally different than what we expect from the machine. So in a way, uh, of course, not so far away from the, from the golem, uh, of course, uh, vector, uh, vectors, of, uh, vectors of Faust, Faust, uh, 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 desire of power, desire of, uh, of puissance. So, but there is also some other machine, which is also very interesting to me about to, to articulate our architecture. It's a machine which is a masochist, ma masochist machine. So the $2 billion machine you could kick off. And uh, that is very important. So how you could pay, you could develop a very sophisticated machine to finally kick up and beat the machine. And, and she take pleasure. The, the machine take pleasure. That is important. Huh? Uh, le, uh, yeah, no, no. Our machines are fabricating machines by themselves in this uh, pursuit of intelligent artificial. It's more something where we use the machine as a pitiable dog. And we transform the machine and we abuse the machine and we are, we are becoming sadic with the machine. Uh, look at how you are sadic with your computers, for example, uh, m mainly. And uh, we became to have a kind of a, psycho relationship and uh, 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 torture relationship with the machine itself. Another, another, um, um, another machine is, a, is a, uh, like a psycho machine. It's uh, how those two little girls are inventing the green monster. Uh, the, I was just, the, the paranoia of the two little girls in a, in, a, in a pursuit of Lewis Carroll, in a pursuit of, uh, of uh, Alice in Wonderland, but not only. I believe Carl was a mathematician, and it was very interesting how mathematicians are always trying to define illogic and logic without a blur boundary, all the time with an osmotic boundary, where it's not so clear uh, how they, they manipulate uh, uh, mythology, legend, to reinject mythology and legend in what works through mathematics. So Lewis Carroll was a, was a logician, exactly, I don't know the name in English, logician, and, uh, uh, in a way, the, the confusion of the paranoia of the two little girls, which are inventing, and the paranoia is a notion of uh, Breton and Dali, of course, and uh, it's a notion of a critical paranoia is a way to invent the world, to filter the world you have in front of you and to modify the world through your own perception. So finally, you filter the reality and through this filtering, your mind produce another reality. It's a way for me, for me, and just for us as a studio in Paris, it's a way to escape from this uh, monolithic and linear system 
of using technology where we all the time approach high logic uh, process of, uh, of uh, stuttering, or again, uh, Tourette syndrome, in a way to, to, to articulate paranoia. Another is, I don't know why it's just pictures in reverse, but uh, another uh, last pictures uh, uh, paradigm I love, it's uh, Villard de Honocourt, this fantastic architect of the Middle Age, uh, before the notion of ar architect was developed and was crewed by Brunelleschi. And uh, it, it, was, uh, it was a period, uh, especially on the cathedral, on the drawing of Villard de Honocourt, where he participated to 10, ten construction of cathedral where he never tried to absorb the entire design to anticipate or to predict the entire design of what he's doing. So he was always a kind of a work in process of a research of equilibrium, of a temptation, of a temptation of going higher and higher, of course, sometimes at, at his own risk, because sometimes the cathedral break down, and it was a uh, knowledge from the breaking to, uh, from the br breaking to define another strategy of trajectories of forces, uh, which finally produced the larc bouton which is absolutely fantastic, uh, the minimalism of the, of the structures, and we will talk about that specifically on a, pro a specific project we are doing now. But it's, uh, it's, it's something where the technology was used not to define the prediction, not to define the achievement, not to entirely develop this illusion of, uh, of uh, framing everything, but where the technology was a work in process of discovering, was a, a heterotopian, was a kind of unknown. We accept the unknown through, through uh, not computation, it was more stereotomy, of course, the cutting of the stone, and the knowledge of the cutting of the stone. But this knowledge was able to be developed as a research, as a step-by-step -step research, as a, as a movement going to be done, if I take the Barocco notion of Deleuze, uh, as, a, as a death. It was not a death in this case. It was not, Barocco is the death of the movement going to be done here, and the, in the cathedral it was a, glo is a movement going to be done. So the question is, do, uh, is it possible now through computation, technology, robotic, machinism, uh, torturing, machinism, and, uh, and some others, is it possible now to, to define a strategy of, uh, of undeterminism and to free or to release a part of the spectrum of the behavior of the machine, of the behavior of the protocol of construction, to finally to start something without to know perfectly where we are going, and to lose a part of the control. So to, to integrate the open source in the process to do something. Uh, so I'm really interested about now technology, if the technology of now has to apply now, is to accept to lose control, is to define the protocol of uh, 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 of uh, uncertainties, of uh, unprediction, of uh, undeterminism, uh, by this way to be reactive, more reactive and to be more uh, adaptable to the transformation of the environment, to the transformation of the social contract, to the transformation of the neighborhood, uh, uh, neighborhood protocol and so on and so on. It's something which is, uh, uh, because there is Copenhagen now, and something we, 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 we could talk about how uh, Guattari was de developing the notion of, uh, of uh, ecology, well, with this term of ecosophy, exactly, and now uh, through this ecosophy, he tried to articulate three parameters. One is coming from the environment, but the environment as it is, not, he, uh, not, as, he has to, not as he should be, or as he, as he was, but as the environment of today, and uh, in here and now, uh, Eon. Uh, and uh, he, the second parameter was uh, the equilibrium of uh, social forces. So how we are now in a permanent disequilibrium of social forces, uh, of course, in post-capitalism, a lot. is a lot of disaster producing, and those have a lot of pleasure also. So there is a contradictory, and we have to use, as an architect, a contradiction in a way to produce something. And the third parameters of the Guattari and Deleuze, but more Guattari in this, in this uh, notion, was subjectivities. So Ecosophy was introducing the subjectivities as a line as a line to integrate the fact that you have to dream or to invent or to look at behind the mirror, beyond the mirror, exactly, another reality. So now I want to show you very quickly, perhaps, uh, how we, we, we try to, to, to manipulate this uh, notion of, uh, of machines. So first we will uh, go across uh, perhaps metaphorical machine, 
metaphorical as a, as a notion, as a vehicle of transportation. And after we could go to mechanical machines, or what is like a literal notion, how a machine could be a literal, uh, to uh, environmental, how a machine could be a building, it was more project we did 10 years ago, but there is a mix on project I did. And uh, we will go after on the paranoiac machine, schizoid and paranoiac machine, how it forces you to react, not only phenomenologically, but also repulsively. So it is more interesting now. So phenomenology is the 60s. Huh? Uh, repulsively, so you, you deny that uh, you deny and you, you are in stress, you caress the danger, you touch the danger, and at the same time, you try to be as far as possible to protect yourself. But in a way, it's interest you to, 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 put the, to put the hands in the, in, the, in the mouth of the shark. And uh, uh, this notion, this palpitation of Eros and Thanatos, uh, it's a, uh, death and life, is also a way for us at the studio to, to, to integrate technology as, uh, as a stuttering effect. And uh, after we will go to the speculative, if we have time, huh, if you are still here, uh, we'll go to... <laughs> So at 2 o'clock two in the morning, we'll go as a speculative, <laughs> speculative when everybody will sleep. Huh? Speculation is about robots with Berokus Nevis, but not only with... Uh, so all the, all mainly 99%, uh, dot 99% of the machine we are uh, sh uh, showing tonight are designed by uh, Stefan Enrich. Stefan, where are you? Ah, Stefan, is there. So, so I'm talking uh, with your permission. Okay, okay, perfect. I need your permission. So, um, uh, well, so first it's uh, something which is a, a, a machine we, we, we have tried to develop uh, four years ago. Very simple machine with, with, a, with a random and stochastic positioning to stack and to smear an existing building through this little stick of glass which are entirely create the grafting of a courtyard. So it's a way to make a staggering and scattering with little scripts. Script is very, very simple. In a way to, in, in this uh, process of transformation, to use the unfinishing positioning, the unfinishing way to work. So we was to protocolize not only three years of construction, but 20 years of construction, like the Sagrada Familia effect, something like that and to force a little bit the curiosity of the construction, which is not exactly a construction, but a transformation. And by this way, on the staggering and scattering, we're using the recycling uh, glass coming from the French alcoholism. So sometimes the French are interested. Interesting to be reintroduced in a way to produce a building because you have, we, we have millions of tons of, of bottle. So we have to do something with the bottle, of course. And uh, it was a way also to have very cheap, very cheap substances to produce this, uh, this uh, smearing. And to produce also inside the smearing with the recycling glass, a potential of uh, losing people. So it's a real labyrinth, not a labyrinth as a, as a talk, not a labyrinth uh, as a perfect geometry, but more as a broken geometry. And uh, so we, our museum of architectures, exactly, it's a museum of architectures. Our museum of architectures could lose people. Uh, that is interesting. Our building could lose people. Is because now, uh, to, to avoid this panoptical, is, it mainly uh, is to avoid this, this phantasm of panoptical effect where, because of the vision, you embrace the reality. So the Eratorotopian of uh, Michel Foucault is something, uh, it's a notion where you discover step by step the transformation of the environment and you, you, and you readjust your comportment, like in a forest, exactly. No, normally in a building, uh, rarely in a building, you have this kind of uh, palpitation, schizoid palpitation. You have this in uh, Adolflos, Adolflos, the round plan of Adolflos, which is very interesting in a way you could lose yourself. Or I have a misunderstanding, a loss of identification between how it appears and how it could be across. And of course, Ken Adams. I'm sure nobody knows Ken Adams. He's, a, he's the architect of the James Bond movie, which is a Berliner, a very interesting Berliner, and one of the most interesting perhaps, architects trying to develop the schizoid of the non-linearity, non where what you are looking for, something, is not exactly what you cross or what you feel and what you, 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 you perceive in a building. Uh, machine. Another machine is, it's, uh, we are talking about machine, huh? so I'm going fast, not to explain. Uh, another machine is a Korean machine to try to collect 
on the, on the zone of the, between North Korea and South Korea, the biomass, the rotten biomass, the fermentation biomass, very dangerous biomass because it's in a land which is a DMZ, demilitarized zone area, which is most, it's a kind of a game of the Cold War in this situation where uh, Soviet and block of capitalism plays this game, this strange game of Cold War, is your unique situation now in the world where there is still this Cold War. And we try to develop a track going in this uh, situation to bring back the biomass uh, of the zone and to smear again, to, to plug uh, with this uh, little robot of one meter high, to plug this biomass over a, a building we are doing to create the insulation by the fermentation of the, of the of by, uh, by the decomposition of the biomass. So, sorry, I think I have to. For me. So it's a building, it's a museum of 2,000 square meters. Uh, the porosity is directly developed by a shooting. We bought a rifle and we shoot in the clay uh, to understand how the ballistic, uh, how the ballistic, how the fears and how the paranoia uh, could produce an aesthetic, how the violence could produce an aesthetic directly on the zone. We are just on the boundary of the North Korea. The track of the machine is going on the on the on the DMZ zone, and bring back to put on the building this kind of uh, smelling bag, sticky sticky uh, substances which are producing the insulation. So the machine is way well, is, is a chimera, like a like a witch in the forest, like the Blair Witch Project, the witch in the forest bringing back the forbidden substances, which the unreachable forbidden substances. So you know, uh, in a way, it's, uh, the machine is not only a puppet, it's a way to articulate territorially, it's territorialized. So the machine is not coming from uh, uh, Renault, Citroën, Peugeot, it's not coming from a uh, car company, but it's directly affected by a situation. And in a way, it's infected a situation. So it's something we, we, uh, we, we try to develop. Another machine I want to show you, it's a very simple, that's why it's a pure metaphor, because it's a, it's a vehicle of transportation for uh, all people to go from an existing building of uh, André Bloch, fantastic building of André Bloch, to, to a new building we are doing. It's just a vehicle to help him, this old guy, to go from sitting, sitting down to standing up and to have a kind of a Darwinism evolution. He has, he's not able to walk anymore and to how the machine is uh, bringing somebody to, uh, uh, to an arrow of time, to a step of an arrow of time, to another one. So you will understand perfectly, so the machine is this one with a, with a sitting changing here with photovoltaic uh, on, the, on the surface. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a little track going from André Bloch, which is a panoptical architecture from the 50s, to this uh, Broomwich project. Broomwich is a parasite. Huh? It's a very interesting parasite of the vegetation. So you could use this parasite to unphase, to increase the photosynthesis of the vegetation and a way to create a kind of a twist of the vegetation, producing directly, I think it's visible here, that is a broom witch. Uh, so it's a way to go with vehicle and to, 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 to change of time, to across like a stargate. Our machine is a stargate of transportation from the futures of the 50s to the unknown, because uh, the broom witch is something about uh, bacteriological effect, is something about parasite, is something about uncontrolling effect on the forest. So, in a way, the machine is uh, it's um, it, it's a tooling of uh, discovering, of approaching the unknown. And more you arrive to the unknown, more the machine helps you to stand up and to be frontally confronted to the scariness or to caress the scariness of the situation a little bit. Uh, machine. Another machine we are now doing from Zoom Tobel in a, in, a, in a, so it's a machine, that's why we are now going in the part which is machine as building. So it's how directly we use very basic and very casual machine to develop the, the movement here, for example, of a building. It's a laboratory of sun, laboratory of sun and light, laboratory of night and day and the, between the moon and the sun. So it's a work about the remanence, but we are not talking about that today. It's about uh, the remanence of the movement of the, of the elliptical and the hemispherical uh, star over, over the, the Earth's planet and how the, the, the geometry is entirely dedicated as an astrolabe. 
So like all the alchemistry, if you understand a bit our work, we all the time try to decode the reality and to recode the reality as uh, alchemistry value, which is uh, alchemistry is something, it seems to be scientific, but it uses protocol of science, but in a way uh, it's uh, totally uh, dedicated or articulated by uh, subjectivities. Uh, so we, we, we developed this kind of remanence of movement of um, uh, this laboratory, a laboratory of, uh, of sun on light, sun on night, sun on moon exactly, of Zoom Tobel to, for many reasons, to decrease the, the urban pollution and to understand how we could e increase the moon effect to develop a dark adaptation, which is very physiological effect, but we are not talking about that today. And the machine is just this movement, this movement to orient the, the building and to orient the building to force the building to be burned by the sun. To be, to be affected again by the sun itself, like the radiation of the sun. So we are developing, uh, as you see the building, but we are developing a component, which is a component with uh, uranium. It's the only country we, which is selling now uranium is Japan, so we bring uranium from Japan. Uh, we have a machine at the studio, with a Becquerel machine, uh, to, 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 to analyze the degree of radio radioactivity of the element. And the uranium, the, the, the uranium is able to create a kind of after glowing effect of 10 hours. So depending on the zone which is touched by the sun by per day, we have the after glowing effect per night, which is directly revealing the, the part of the skin which has been uh, affected by the ray of the sun. So it's a laboratory of the sun, so that's why it's very important for us to also articulate the way to justify that the environment is not safe and the environment is directly plugging its uh, monstrosity, its dirtiness in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a situation. So we are not in an hygienic uh, uh, protocol of transformation, but more uh, to understand how the collateral effect of the transformation of the, of the, of the, of the warming of the planet, of the environment, is able to touch, to touch physically and to affect the f physically uh, the surface of, uh, of, uh, of a project. So that is a pigment of uranium. So we did, we are, uh, it's like a flyer bugs, huh? There's a, bu a building talking about flyer bugs. We are doing now some research to avoid to, to, you know, the uranium, the radioactivity is additive, so you never, you cannot clean yourself. Each time you are, you are, you are confronted to the, do the building you receive, radioactivity. So we are now pro making the protocol to, for people living 100 years, living near the building, how we, we need to be under the, the step, of course, the, under the level of the admissible uh, uranium uh, quantity. So it's very interesting to, to, for me to, to touch the dangerosity, to, 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 to negotiate also with the dangerosity of this kind of substances for the afterglowing and for the spectrum, for the ghost by night. Another machine we are uh, now constructing is a, is a very conventional machine, five axis machine, which is very, very conventional in a way. And it's make noise, as you see. It's an anthrop we talk about anthroposophic project because it's a project, a monolithic project. Uh, so it's a most, I don't, I don't know if there is bigger machine than this one. It's a 10 meters by 40 meters, five axis machine in a huge, like in Switzerland and in Japan, people have a crazy machine. And uh, we are constructing a building of uh, 1,000 square meters entirely in piece of wood, monolithic piece of wood. So what is interesting for me is the core sans organ, the body without organ, which is uh, it's not only to make a cavern, <laughs> but it's also to, to dematerialize the notion of structuralism in architectures, where, uh, where there is, uh, mainly with computation, is coming back incredibly uh, now. Our surface structures are totally decomposed, like the five point of uh, Le Corbusier. And uh, finally, it's very uh, contradictory for me our computation produce something which is the pursuit of the five point. So in a way, it's uh, uh, how we could do a building in a monolithism, in the core sans organ, where we are not separating uh, the slab to the post, the ceiling to the facade, and everything is uh, glue, is produced in this uh, monolithism. By this way, we could calculate, we could calculate the shape, not only the shape of the, of the, of the spike, 
of the of the exterior membrane, but the shape integrating all the networks and all the beam and all the structural structural uh, 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 constraint inside the building itself. So it's, um, what's very clear, very clear, it's a kind of a monstrous building. It says it's a, it's an ice museum talking about the transformation and the disappearing of the ice glacier in uh, Switzerland, exactly. So mainly all the floor are frozen to conserve and to show the cylinders of ice and how during this last centuries uh, the acceleration of the disappearing of the glacier became now something we could study and could understand. So it's, um, it's, it's uh, Evelyn, on Evelyn there is a fantastic carnaval, yes, there is a fantastic, uh, no carnaval, it's something to try to exorcise the winter everywhere. Normally in the Middle Age, it's an exorcization of the winter. So you could scream, you could beat your neighborhood, you could now, you have some paganism carnaval, not in Venice, huh, of course, but uh, uh, that is more for the Petit Marquis. But in, the, in Switzerland or in the mountain, you have very, very dirty carnaval where people are beating themselves really uh, hardly. And they scream. And they, this, in that village, they carry some uh, monstrous uh, chimeria uh, mask zoophile mask between uh, animal and human, uh, and uh, they, they are doing this kind of uh, carnival in uh, February or March to exercise. And we present the project to the population, because in Switzerland you need to go receive the votation, uh, you know that, you need to receive the votation, so all the people need to accept your project. It's not a top-down system, it's really a bottom-up. Uh, there's many problems in Switzerland, a very bad, bad, uh, uh, the, the dimension in Switzerland, but this dimension is very interesting. In, in a way, you have to negotiate with everybody. And we received the, 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 the authorization uh, last, uh, last six months to construct the building only because we present the project as something monstrous to do the same, to exorcise the warming of the planet. And people understood that. If they came to me and said, oh, you understand that, uh, and maybe now we are, we are, we are, we are idolatre in the village. It's incredibly how people love us. Because they understand how the line of subjectivity is finally, is better, to, 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 is better than to entirely describe uh, technologically how it works. Another machine, which is, uh, this one realized, is a machine which is very archaic. It's a machine in, a, in in uh, Thailand, where we produce very, very, like a bicycle machine, trying to use the power ship of an elephant to transfer the power ship of an elephant inside a dynamo system, inside a, 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 a pneumatic system, to force the facade to create the wind inside, like a pterodactyl, to force the facade to create the wind inside the building. So it's a, again, the sloop system, anthroposophic system, and where you reintroduce something in something else, and you reinject. I don't know if it's ecological, because I, 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 I'm not sure, uh, but in a way, it's uh, to profit of a situation, to extract a transformation of a situation from the situation itself, through machinism, uh, through machinism, through bicycle, and through pneumatic. And finally, it was so difficult to buy an elephant, but you know, I, I always say that. It's, it's not so difficult to buy an elephant, but it's difficult to feed an elephant. Because he eats 200 kilo per day, he's shitting 200 kilo, per day, 200 kilo per day. So we are in the Vaucanson, we are not, you know, we are not in the Vaucanson duck with a little shit every 10 days, he has a 200 kilo per day. So we try in my anthroposophic to reinclude the shit inside the biomass gas production, but it doesn't work for many reasons. So at the place of the one elephant, we bought two buffalo two albinos buffalo, totally crazy, without brain. There is robot without brain. I think the most interesting robotic research now is robotic without brain. The German, German and Switzerland, they are working incredibly about robot. No, I'm not talking about the robots from Sony, which are in the pursuit of the simulation of human body in this uh, ridiculous golem or gollum. But uh, in a uh, robot with a brain, they have to understand the movement of the equilibrium in the movement, which is a very interesting, this dynamic process. Well, well. so another part of the, of the project, of the, of the today is to talk about, uh, I'm going very fast, huh, is to, 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 to talk about uh, death and life, to talk about paranoia. Our machine is a way to deal with the dangerosity of a situation or to deal with the projection of the dangerosity, you, how you expect the dangerosity, or how you play the game of the dangerosity to, 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 to redefine 
an aesthetic relation, uh, an aesthetic relationship to a, to a location. So first, it's a project in Trinidad. We will never do this project, but in a way, we worked five, six years ago. It was a project just in the middle of the forest where this forest is entirely infected by a virus. It's called the virus of the Nile. And this virus of the Nile is carried by, a by specific mosquitoes. So we have tried to do a project which is at the same time an habitat for people, uh, a dwelling part for people, but at the same time a trap for mosquitoes, where the boss has to negotiate the fears and the boss has to negotiate the death and the life of the mosquitoes itself. So I think I have, yes, a movie. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, I accelerate. It's the run of the mosquito. So only the, I became a specialist of mosquito. Uh, only, only the female mosquitoes are beating you. Only the female mosquitoes are beating you for babies' uh, fooding. And uh, so in a way, you, we are create a genocide. It's just uh, we, spray, we spray carbon gas in the little hole you see on the top of the building to create a double membrane. And in the first membrane, people are living here. And in the double membrane, the mosquitoes are dying. So you hear in your living part the dying of the mosquitoes, the crying, the screaming of the mosquitoes. But it's only female. So uh, I'm sorry, it's a genocide. It's a very sexual genocide I'm doing to create a gay club around, so perhaps. Which is not so bad, in a way. So the client became totally crazy about it. Look at this. That is the most beautiful part of my project. Yes, go in. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, it, it's, it's very interesting. So the technology is to deal, to deal with it, to deal with the situation, to negotiate with the situation, to lose control, to negotiate, and to, to also absorb, like a surfer. You talk about surfing. When you are doing surfing, I'm not the lose talk a lot of surfing, of course, but in the fall, but not only. Uh, when you're doing surfing, you cannot entirely uh, dominate the waves. You just uh, borrow. You borrow the energy. And it's very interesting how you borrow the energy of something which is too big for you. That is a, a per permanent uh, sentence of Deleuze when it's too big for you. I think it's very interesting for me to consider a situation as too big for me. So uh, we never try to dominate, but to infiltrate and to infect also, to understand how we could infect or disinfect the situation. Another project, we, we are still waiting the construction in Thailand. It's a very strange country now with uh, since four years, since five years, since the tsunami, everything going bad. And uh, it's a project where we have tried to develop a, 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 an aesthetic directly coming from the pollution. So here's a machine, it's an elect electrostatism machine which is producing 1,000, sorry, 100,000 100, volts, very high voltage, but without ampere, without intensity. So you, the only risk is an electrostatic shock. So it's dangerous if, it's dangerous if you have a pacemaker, but well, there is no, no regulation in Thailand about that. So I could profit, <laughs> I could profit of this uh, lack of, of rule. But in a way, it's, um, it, it's a project we try, typically schizophrenia, the machine helps us to develop a schizophrenia, schizophrenic uh, system where the topology around the project is entirely dedicated to this uh, attraction of monoxide of carbon. It's uh, directly the particle coming from the traffic jam, and so we make some studies to attract the monoxide of carbon, which is the most dangerous particle for your, for your breathing. Uh for your lungs and uh, to attract with high voltage and uh, high voltage with electrostatism high voltage to change the, 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 the negative against the positive and by this way to around the building to create a kind of depollution. But again, it's a depollution which cannot entirely frame the effective of the depollution. It's a process to at the same time to show the pollution. So how the materiality of the loss, of the lack of hygiene, of the, of the chemical failure of a city could become the flesh of a building, could become the flesh of an aesthetic of an architecture. And honestly, it has, for me, it's today. Uh, the world is dirt. <laughs> we are confronted to dirtiness. We are confronted to, to la, to, à, à la salle au prix du monde. 
and we have to walk uh, on, the, on this contradiction, and we have to walk on this dirtiness. Uh, we could also perfectly think about uh, to clean this dirtiness with the phantasm of, uh, of propaganda, of the religious attitude of a better future. But it's coming, that is the future. That is the notion of futures. That is the notion of Kubrick. That is the notion of Odyssey. Are we now again in Odyssey period? I'm not sure. Or look at the world, how it's palpitating in very contradictory direction, in incredibly, uh, in incredibly opposite and opposite ambiguity of day after day. So perhaps the architectures could help us to reveal the situation and not to deny that we are in, uh, in, this, uh, in this perfect contradictory, even uh, in our own desire, how we articulate our own desire through the desire of consumation, or consumption, and at the same time, the desire to preserve something, which is a little bit contradictory. Uh, well, uh, another uh, project I will show you, it's a, a project of building, it's, it was a long time, long, it was a tower, uh, the only tower we tried to do in La Défense. It was a tower trying to develop a surface entirely dedicated to sustainable and renewable energies, specifically photovoltaic cell and, and, um, and um, air vacuum system for creating the warming. And uh, uh, we work with ADF, Electricity, National Electricity of France, to develop a, a, a sensation of psoriasis, a sensation of disease. So how the sun, uh, we, are, we are using the sun effect and we show that the sun effect affect again and infect the surface. So produce the, 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 produce at the same time the, the unplug situation of the building. But also we know that the radiation of the sun again is not so safe. So how this desire to use the sun and the desire to protect your skin against the sun, which is uh, this kind of contradiction I'm talking about, which is this kind of uh, uh, sch schizophrenia we have to negotiate as an architect. So but ADF, they love the project, but they stop the project, of course. Um, uh, another uh, very old than 10 years ago, but we start, we s before to extract with uh, Stefan Enrich and with computation with Mark Farnes, before to extract uh, uh, the machine from the building, like uh, we, we, we were considering the machine as, as a building. The building, not the building as a machine, but the, like, like modernism, but the machine as a building. And it was uh, one of the first projects we did to try to very very ridiculous uh, morphing, but 10 years ago it was important for us to understand how we could transform a building from, from its own geography by sucking up in Venice, in Venice in Italy, by sucking up the dirtiness of the Laguna by a, a capillarity effect. So we did a lot of research about capillarity and computation, digital, at this period it was digital, sorry. <laughs> and, uh, and to understand uh, with, uh, with Amar Elwani, uh, my partner on this project, and it, it was to understand how uh, a building could resist to its own transformation digitally. No. Uh, morphing is interesting. It was uh, uh, black and white of Michael Jackson. Uh, you remember that in 94. Morphing is to go from point A to point B. But you could create also the resistance of the transformation by the vectorial resistance of the transformation. So how the point A still want to stay at the point A and don't permit the point B to be the point B. So a more thing is to, to, to do something from a, 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 a go, go boy to a playmate. Uh, it's typically a system where you, you cross a zone of transformation. And we work a lot 10 years ago about the morphine, how the morphine could produce a resistance of the environment, could produce uh, the a resistance of the pictures, the previous pictures, the previous environment representing uh, uh, the step before we, 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 we transform this reality. Uh, uh, if we are going in now in uh, something which is more about paranoia, uh, the machine we are developing, machine, bacteriological machine, is uh, for example a project we just finished in Paris to develop a chemical facade with beaker and inside this beaker we are, we are now developing a rhizo, a never, I never remember the name of this uh, bacteria, honestly, it's rhizobum, rhizo, Rhizobium. It's a rhizobium bacteria in the beaker. So we increase uh, the, we, we create kind of a liquidity in this beaker. We collect this liquidity and uh, through this liquid, this, this uh, bacteria is able to, to reinforce the nitrogen production of the, of the substract on which the, gr the fern on the, on, the, on the vegetation is growing. So it's typically something which is 
dealing again eros and thanatos. It seems to be green, it seems to be perfectly ecological correct, smart bio building, uh, eco smart bio building, but in a way with this bacteria, with this bacteriological production, we are in prosecution with all the neighborhood. <laughs> so, uh, so it appears as a monstrous, as a freak, as a monstrous, monstrous relationship to the, to the environment. So our architecture is not safe, and our architecture is the deal for, for us between, uh, between the, 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 um, the, an environment, its dangerosity, and its transformation. Uh, just to say that there is a kind of repetition, repetition and uh, uh, uniform and uh, singularity and repetition, or repetition and difference in this kind of beaker, in this 300 beaker we did by blowing. And the difference is only coming from the blowing, the pressure of the blowing of the craftsman, which is a bit beautiful in a way. Our uh, component could be different only because of the human pressure. We could go further now in this, uh, in this type of research. A very small building. An another uh, project we are doing now in Korea, another, it's a project of, uh, the machine is an osmotic machine, it's our two, exactly, two neighborhood. We find a way to negotiate with two neighborhoods, so it's two people with two land, and now we could develop a twist in the land between them to share a part of the environment. So one, one of the land is bringing the light inside the building, and one of the land is bringing the uh, recycling of the waste of the building itself. So it's how two neighborhoods have to negotiate as a symbiotic effect. So they have to negotiate between light and uh, cleaning the waste, the waste of the waters by hydroponic nature, like the previous building I show you, uh, realize. So it's something interesting for me to force relationship. So two entrants, three entrants, where people are totally twisting themselves together, but it's not only twist, uh, um, um, uh, especially uh, in, the, in the space, they are not only twist uh, morphologically, but in a way also to share, to share something, to share the substances of life. So that is a part of the component in the, not in glass, but in the roto molding uh, plastic. And that is a, is a component in uh, hydroponic and aeroponic natures, which is able to clean the wastewaters interior model, etc. Another project uh, I want to show you, it's uh, the very paranoiac, when we start the real schizoid project, it's uh, a machine we did, I don't have photo pictures, but we did this machine at the Biennale of Venice uh, seven years ago, where we create a, bar, a lagoon bar where people are able to drink directly the lagoon, the dirtiness of the lagoon. So it was a, it was a biennale of 2000, so who was the, it was Massimiliano Fuxa, something like that perhaps. Well, it was not a good biennale, but in a way we did uh, like, like many times, <laughs> but, uh, no, but not as worse as the last one. Huh? Not as, um, but um, uh, it was, um, it was a, a bar where people could drink the lagoon with a very sophisticated machine of cleaning the lagoon with a ceramic uh, system, with ozone system, and we forced, we forced, we asked the people to test this, uh, to test this drinking of the lagoon, indirect, exactly. So it was not in different time, it's direct. And it was very beautiful how people were walk, talking a lot in this Biennale. It was the first Biennale about technology, propaganda of technology, how technology could repair the error of the past. And of course, all, always this kind of pretentious, of a, 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 a naive pretentious about talking about technology. But at the same time, the same people talking about technology, they refused to drink. Is that when they refuse to think, but say, oh, my technology are not reliable. May, oh, what are you talking about? <laughs> so it, it's, uh, it's exactly what we try to do uh, at the studio. It's uh, to force this pulsion, repulsion, and, uh, 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 and uh, desaliani desalination, desalination. Is, is understandable about desalination? Yeah. Desalination about, about technology. <laughs> so another uh, one, so it's uh, with uh, Stefan, we try to make a psychotrop, that is my best project. We try to make a psychotrop project in Croatia, in the Franciscan, Franciscan uh, uh, um, monastery, where we try to recycle the plant which has been used during the Middle Age to make drugs and medicine. 
So to, of course, to reintroduce uh, uh, Pharmacopé and to reintroduce uh, Apothecaire, which is really the, the name. So we develop a, a, a several machine between sublimation, drying, uh, with the apparatus holder of transforming the, the plant, you see here, and to transform the plant and to keep, like the fungus. The fungus, no. The fung what, is the, what is the name of the... Of the, of the of the fish in Japan you eat with the toxicity of the liver. Fugu, voilà. so fugu, fugu, <laughs> fugu. So like the fugu effect to keep a part of toxicity, to deconcentrate the toxicity, but to take a part of the toxicity and out of you, you, so we will do a restaurant where people could test the part of the toxicity or the fears of the part of the toxicity which remain through this uh, protocol of transformation. Which is, uh, so if, if we success to produce this project, I will become a reseller of toxicity and reseller of, uh, of uh, mitridatization, mitridatization protocol, which is well, not so bad, not so bad. Uh, well, uh, uh, another project I did as a machine, it's, uh, we try to make a machine in MIT, in MIT. We try to make an MIP in MIT, in a, in a pie in a pay building, which is a, is a pay building in MIT in a MIP building. It's a it's a machine to. So it was a project last two years. It's a it's a it's a machine just plug on the Media Lab exactly. And uh, we show it in a big exhibition, but finally, the financial, for financial reasons, they refused. <laughs> but it was a, a machine to try to detoxify the pee and to help the people, like the Asiatic, to drink every day, every morning, a 20 centiliters of their own pee. But you know that, you don't know, but pee is not toxic. There's a urea in the pee where you could metabolize immediately the toxicity, the part of the toxicity of the pee, you, you, your stomach metabolizes it directly if you absorb it. So finally, you have a repulsion, you have the fears of the toxicity which is, doesn't exist. So it was a machine to clean the paranoia of the toxicity which doesn't exist. <laughs> which that is fantastic. <laughs> that is fantastic because we are exactly talking about this, uh, protocol of relationship through the machine and through, of course, the, how you, 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 you the, 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 the dangerosity of something appears as, as an illusion. But illusion, we have to take care about illusion. It uh, destroys the world. It makes war illusion, of course. Subjectivities are producing war. And uh, another very important, because we are doing three now new immersion chamber, is hypnosis chamber. We are working with, uh, so it's a machine, uh, it's a hypnosis machine to help people to escape from this world. I think architecture has to do that, to force or to help you to escape through immersion. So we, we work with uh, Francois Roustan, the hypnosis specialist of Jacques Lacan. He's still alive, not Jacques Lacan, but Francois Roustan. And we have developed a project uh, through Firebox's machine, but it doesn't matter huh, how the machine, the hypnosis machine is more important than how it's done, to develop a, a machine like an extension of your own organ, extension of your own fluid, of your own body, of your own uh, uh, pipe and, uh, and vessel, and how this extension could be a zone where through an hypnosis you could go somewhere else. You could travel somewhere else. So I did, I have the hypnosis uh, session in my computer, this take 20 minutes, so I'm sure two days too late. Uh, but next time, if you want, we could test the hypnosis uh, session with Francois Roustan. It works perfectly, it's incredible. You do, you you float in my universe. Uh, you, you, you touch my urbanism. What is even interesting, because in a way it costs less than to produce building in Shanghai, huh? uh, no, no in, a, in, a, in a low consumption of CO2 huh? because of traveling. You're just traveling, travel uh, physically by magnetism. Uh, something interesting, the magnetism was a notion in the 18th centuries, before, now it's called hypnosis, but it was a was a political uh, club, political feminine club in, in Europe, specifically in Germany and in France. It was only f uh, feminine club trying to use magnetism to escape to another layer of reality, 
uh, entirely dedicated to freedom, a racial, a social, uh, no, a social, a sexual, and with kind of uh, the beginning of an ideology of democracy. So it was very interesting how hypnosis was used at the beginning as a target uh, to, to force the 19th century to reconsider uh, with the pre-modern, with Fourier, considerant and some others, to, to, to reconsider the uh, social protocol. Uh, well, so another one, and now we are doing, so we are becoming specialists of uh, hypnosis room. We are constructing one bigger one exterior in Japan now. It's, it's produced with CNC machine in Spain. It's, the resin is done in France. And there is 10 containers going in Japan to be reassembled of site. So with that is typically the condition of production of now with technology. So finally, you could uh, really define on the world position of production and strategy of production, depending on the cost, of course, of each country. Another uh, project, another uh, machine, we, a machine, like a, okay, a machine which is cutting the aluminum on a comb, which is absolutely not so important, but it's a machine talking about animatronics. So we, we realize, okay, we realized uh, last two years a project trying to reveal the transformation of the warming of the planet by an aluminum uh, volume uh, directly reproducing something we, we analyze and we scan in the South Pole. I've, I've been there uh, with Pierre Wig, exactly, in the South Pole to develop and to understand how the warming of the planet is now making appearing new uh, surface, new new fragment of uh, of the of the Earth's planet. So we were not so far away than the the, the, the uh, Armstrong uh, in the '69 walking for the first time, but on the Earth because of the warming and because of the merging, the melting, sorry, of the snow. So we we came back with the analyze as a report. Uh, we came back and an analyze of this volume, and this volume is entirely suspended in the museum by, uh, uh, by counterbalance on waters, entirely filled by waters. And during the evaporation of this uh, water counterbalance, of course, this volume is re-becoming re flat. So I'm very interested, uh, we, we try to define a position where the warming or where the transformation of the biotope is able to be an agent of transformation for the architectures. Not only a kind of denying this, uh, this uh, dynamic effect, but also to to not, to not to abuse it, not to reinforce it, not to increase it, but to use it directly in a protocol of transformation. But also, we came back, what is more important, we came back with a penguin. We came back with an albinos, uh, albinos penguin. It's very rare to, to, to find an albinos penguin because penguins are incredibly racist, and they reject the white penguin. And you know, if you want to survive in the South Pole or North Pole, there is no penguin in North Pole, but if you want to survive in the South Pole when you are a penguin, you need to crowd it. You need to be crowded with your, your friend, or not your friend, but all, all, the, all of the community, which is disgusting in a way. But um, uh, so when you are albinos, you are rejected. And your time of surviving, because of the frozen of the time, is really, really rare. So we, we use satellite system, we use a lot of technology to try to make this albinos penguin surviving. So we came back with this albinos penguin. So I could show you, I think there is a little movie where you could, yes. A little movie where you could see, it's very quick, but we try to make it alive again. So it's not flying, a penguin is not flying, but uh, just moving the wing, you could see, come on. Come on. Yes. <laughs> He's breathing. So the penguin is alive. So the moral is safe. We, di we never hunt albinos penguins in the North Pole, in the South Pole. Of course, it's an animatronics uh, penguin. We asked to Spielberg, not Spielberg, but ILM, Lucas, Lucas uh, factory. To we came back with the albinos penguin in the South Pole. The best way to find uh, what you research is to come back with your research. It's, of course, that to come with your research. So we did a fantastic movie about this penguin moving on the, north, on the South Pole and came back. So, well, to finish uh, this uh, presentation, I have more time or not? <laughs> 10 minutes? Uh, fine. Uh, fine, I stop it? Yeah. Five minutes? Oh, okay. 
most important for us in terms of, uh, of uh, you, you talk about uh, uh, urbanism and, uh, and how we could define this kind of urbanism, unpredictable urbanism with machine. Um, uh, he, he put almost a million on the right where everything is uh, zoning and predictable and achieved before the construction. Everything is deterministic, uh, and uh, uh, I think the sponge, the sponge macro pictures showing an algorithm. It's also an algorithm. It's an algorithm which is uh, reactive and uh, uh, reactive and uh, able to 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 transform its geometry depending on the transformation of the environment. So uh, it's uh, this kind of impermanency reactivity, which is uh, unpredictable reactivity, which is something which interests us. So we. We have tried to, to f last last four or five years with uh, Baroque to, to first to start by a sky fi movie, but to understand how we could define a protocol of construction where the algorithm of construction could be modified during the construction itself. And uh, it doesn't affect the resistance of the building. Uh, it's, uh, it's a typical geometry which is able to, to be absorbing, to, be, to absorb this kind of uh, constraint. Well, it's not exactly done like this, of course. That is more a kind of uh, abyss uh, uh, a Cameron movie coming from abyss, but it's a, it's a desire to think about a machine um, uh, which where the, 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 the behavior, the trajectories, the, the not so far away from the track of the railway. The railway, the track of the railway of the, in the 19th century in the US was carried by the machine. And depending of the resistance of the Indian reserve, or depending of the resistance of the topography, they change the trajectories directly on the, uh, on the railway track, which is very interesting because it's a way that the end prediction was mechanically and uh, technologically absorbed by the system. So um, I I I with this, we, we have tried to understand uh, what kind of uh, machine has to be developed to reach any point in X, Y, Z, uh, to, to to also to with a specific nozzle to uh, produce a counter crafting with Berokus Nevis uh, to make the counter crafting and to uh, to to integrate the counter crafting in the protocol of transformation, the protocol of uh, smoothing the concrete, the fiber concrete during the secretion with a specific viscosity, with a specific adherence, with a specific coagulation, which is very interesting. The, chemi the chemistry of the concrete is a fantastic research now, and not only there is many groups trying to transform the chemistry of the concrete because steel is too expensive also, perhaps, and to come back to something which is very basic uh, but without framework because mainly the main problem of using concrete framework. So we did with Berox this kind of a very simple uh, uh, tentative, temptation of changing the algorithm during the secretion, during the, the, the pouring, and uh, specifically you will see the scale very, very, s s s s very, very small. So come on, come on. Okay, so and uh, it, it's uh, it's I would say some prediction. Uh, I would say some prediction is able to be predictable or to be organized or to be expertise in a way of production. So we change. Uh, you see here the movie has been broken, but we change between one and the Boolean of two tube uh, during the secretion itself. So it's a way. It's we are coming back to Villard de Nocourt. We are coming back to this work in process where something could be start with a knowledge of stereotomy, with a knowledge of uh, the trajectories of the forces, uh, but without to know perfectly what kind of design we could achieve. So that then we are going a little bit further now with uh, Francois Jouve, a mathematician, very fantastic mathematician in France, and we develop a, a software now to understand how this uh, alveolar and reticular structures you see before is not only coming from a scripting, but it's coming from a recursive and, uh, and uh, incremental system of trajectories of forces. So how the design is not done before, but the calculation make it appearing, make directly the, the forces appear through the calculation. And the forces appear at the same time created by this way the trajectories and the, 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 um, the sustainability of the system itself. So it's very interesting for me to, to integrate the structures as a post-effect, 
not as a pre-effect, but as a post-effect. You, know, you could first develop the desire, what kind of desire you are doing. You are, you are, you are requesting for the situation. And the structures make the, it's a research of equilibrium of the system you create before. So we are doing uh, very important research now about uh, global calculation, local calculation. Uh, local, local, uh, local calculation is for living morphology and uh, step by step, how this living morphology are rich to sustain the, the trajectories of the forces by this uh, so, so software we are creating, dynamics of it, it's an optimization. It could be, uh, it, it's, it, we could use also some uh, evolutionary, evolutionary algorithm, but it's too heavy to calculate something so big. So we are more using an optimization system, uh, undeterminism and optimization system to develop the trajectory, and the trajectory became physical, became, became the structures of the construction itself. So uh, uh, we are just working on that in the studio, and uh, we are working also with Mark Fornes at Columbia about this kind of research also, uh, and uh, with uh, Stefan E at USC. So our oh, uncertainties and, and prediction could be developed as an expertise, but we are about geometry, about trajectories of machine, about protocol of construction, about all the substance uh, coming from the machine itself, which is able to produce. So for example, here it's directly coming from the calculation and the equilibrium. Uh, uh, the recursive, so it's uh, very near the, the trees. We were looking for this uh, research since 10 years. It's how the trees is incremental in the growing, but how the, tr the trunk of the trees has to readapt all the time is uh, radius to absorb the growing and the entropy of the branches. Which is uh, uh, to, 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 to add this uh, recursive and incremental is help us to define a very complex system of production. So after us, we works how to produce it, how to produce it with robots, so with robot secretion. So we, it's no more this time uh, a machine uh, with Beroc, sorry, Beroc, but it's, uh, it, we try to define ourselves. Uh, the, we, we talked about that last time, about uh, the possibility of extrusion, how we could extrude the structures to absorb the, the, the complex geometry. Uh, the last thing I want to show you is, the main problem we have is who drives the machine? What is, the, what is the key to drive the machine? And what is the key to, ex, to express your desire? So we are developing that with the CNRS of Grenoble. We are developing a, a system now to reread the neurobiological equilibrium of your body. So depending on the secretion of dopamine, of melatonin, no, melatonin doesn't affect too much you, but the, uh, cortisol, adrenaline, uh, serotonin, depending on uh, your pre-consciousness uh, uh, produce, you see here a nanoparticle we are doing now, uh, we could create a malentendu, a misunderstanding between how, the langu how the, your language express your desire and contradictory how your body and uh, your, 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 your equilibrium, your chemical equilibrium of your body is able to develop a schizophrenia or to develop a duplicity according to what you say by the language. So the malentendu is something which is very interesting for me between something between, between the coracephale, between the body without brain, the body with a machine, with a chemical machine, as a concept of chemical machine, and, uh, and of course the libre arbitre, the free will. It's a very interesting notion of Spinoza where um, it's, Negri talked a lot about that, how the libre arbitre now is very, how we could be increased skeptical about the libre arbitre. How the libre arbitre is something intelligibly manipulated by the media cultures and by, by the, by the post-capitalism and the subjectivities coming from the post-capitalism. So it's a way to redefine the desire, the programming of the desire, because they're not, to be an architect is to understand desire and to, to define desire between uh, between pleasure and necessity, because something which articulates pleasure and necessity, not so easy to do. And we know that our desires are totally predictable also. So it's difficult to make a predi unpredictable architecture if we don't understand ourselves how to produce the condition of the emission of the unprediction uh, by the human being also. So we are doing this machine uh, now, it's, it's in, under construction. It will be ready in two, in two months in Paris. A machine is like a polygraph machine 
to force, to, to understand between the question I asked to you, how your, your metabolism of your biology is recalibrated itself, is in evolution, and informing my own interview to your body language, to your, um, to your, from your coracephal, from your body without brain, uh, from the perception of the, for example, the cortisol and the adrenaline is a pseudo uh, reactivity uh, through the danger, and the dopamine is a pseudo uh, effect coming, indicating the degree of pleasure. So I think as an architect, we have to reintroduce a neurobiology also as a, a potential of reading desire and reading subconsciousness. So thank you. Peace out.